What's going on internet? IG here again today with another Linux distro review. Today we are finally having a look at Fedora 20 and it's the GNOME desktop. So Fedora 20 came out recently and yes it has been out for a little while and thus it's had a bit of time to stabilize because it is one of those bleeding edge distributions. It's used as a test bed for Red Hat Enterprise Linux and on that note, they can sometimes have stability issues, especially when the distribution first comes out. Now, this distribution has had a little bit of time to stabilize since, and for that, from that perspective, now with a fully updated Fedora 20 install, it's actually been relatively stable, which is not usually something I can say about Fedora. Now, as far as changes go on the desktop side of things, you're really not gonna see much apart from recent revisions of the desktop environments themselves. So whether it's KDE or GNOME or GNOME, LXDE or XFCE, they're all gonna be running their latest stable versions. So that in and of itself will bring a few changes to what the user sees. But apart from that, most of the changes go on on the back end. So as you can see, because we are running the GNOME desktop, we've got GNOME 3.10 and thus we're running GNOME Shell as well. Now GNOME 3.10 is just one of the desktop environments that you can get with Fedora 20. You can also get Cinnamon with the latest Cinnamon 2.0 release. You can get Enlightenment, the E17 desktop. You can also get the KDE Plasma desktop at 4.11. And you can also get the Mate release as well. And you can get XFC and LXDE spins of Fedora as well. So they've got every desktop out there covered. If you do want to install another desktop environment, you can. But they seem to push GNOME as their flagship. And that seemed to be the desktop environment that you guys wanted me to look at. So having said that, the GNOME desktop environment and GNOME 3.10 especially his has undergone continual simplification and continual streamlining, I guess, since it's... 2.x release series. With the GNOME 3 series, or, the, or with the GNOME Shell releases, they seem to be gradually stripping features out, trying to make the desktop more simplified and more easy for new users. And I guess to this effect, it, it is kind of working, but at the same time, it's ticking off a lot of experienced Linux users. And thankfully, it's out of that frustration that alternatives have arisen through the Cinnamon and Mate desktop environments. But with all of that angst aside, I've actually got to say that I'm really liking the way that GNOME 3.10 is looking nowadays. Yes, the icons are still a little bit ugly, especially here in the folders, but earlier complaints that I had about Fedora releases, if you could go back and look at my older reviews, that when you click on the activities here and you go into the all applications, some of these icons would just look terribly ugly and they just wouldn't scale up well and because of the fact that icons are really big and they're bold and they're front and center you want them to look nice and for actually for once they do look nice and not only that but they've also implemented a folders category so they can throw a bunch of stuff that you're probably not going to use that often into these folders and that way they're not cluttering up the space with a whole bunch of apps that you're probably never going to use or at least you're not going to intentionally go looking for them for discoverability now, like you've already seen, if you saw the last review that I did, the Pingai 13.10, uh, this does have the page layout of apps now in the window here. So if you do have multiple pages of apps, you scroll down and it swipes page by page, not just simple scrolling. Now, as you can see here, these are the applications that you get by default in Fedora. So at a glance, you can see exactly what you have installed. And it's a pretty bare bones, it's a pretty bare bones install, but at the same time, it weighs in at just under a gig and it gives you more or less the essentials, an office suite, a music player, a web browser, photo browser, webcam, and a handful of utilities. Now, another thing worth mentioning is the, is the different GNOME apps now with their online integration. Gradually, Linux desktops are becoming more and more integrated with online services, and this is a really good thing. Because most of us live our lives on the internet now, it's much better to have a desktop that interacts with those different online services. So going into online accounts, you can see here that I've got my Google account set up. And I can also add things like own cloud, Facebook, Flickr, Windows Live, Microsoft Exchange, etc. And then I can switch on and off what I want to use these accounts for. So then, for example, if I were to go into the chat client, it'll automatically import and list all of the different contacts that I have under my Google account, as well as any documents that I have in Google Drive. It'll bring those in as well. And I'm fairly certain it gives me export settings in Shotwell, though I can't be sure of that. I know it does in Ubuntu. But one thing that the GNOME team are starting to get right, and thus the Fedora team is also benefiting from, is the fact that GNOME is gradually cleaning up their look and feel. 
It's starting to look more and more uniform across the board and I really like this idea of having the window controls in the same level as the other controls in the panel. So you don't have this weird obtrusive title bar with the window controls on it. Save space and to be honest it makes a bit more sense. Now a lot of these controls I realize do shriek of touchscreen. But to be honest that's the way that nearly every desktop environment and every operating system is going nowadays. So I really don't have that many complaints about it. Now probably the single most exciting thing about Fedora 20, and really this just comes down to a, a more updated release of GNOME, is the implementation of YUM into a new software manager that GNOME has, that the GNOME project has been working on. Now to me this software center is a little bit spartan at this stage, but I love the potential. You can see we've got a featured apps category here with a banner, and then if I want to check out Inkscape for example, you can see here that it's just got information at this point while they are planning on having ratings and screenshots etc. But still the fact that they've taken the time to categorize a lot of this software into featured and you can see here on the internet we've got chat, we've got email and all of these applications are ones that actually work. They're not just random apps that somebody has pulled out from a search menu. These are real pieces of software that people can download and install and use on their Fedora desktop. And so I think for what it's worth, they've done a very nice job of categorizing software and putting it in easily discoverable categories that people can then download and use. For example, we've got the GIMP and we've got Inkscape and Blender all here under Featured for Graphics Programs because there are some great graphics programs under Linux. So for instance, if I wanted to install Darktable, come in here, click install, and it's as simple as that, Darktable is now installed. Let's launch it to have a look, and there you have it. So it's a very quick and streamlined process, and while it is missing features, such as adding repositories and adding ratings and things like that, I love the potential of this software center, because it's certainly a lot less clunky than the Ubuntu one, and its categorization and filtering of the apps that are available for the Fedora desktop is also really top notch. There's really only apps in here that I would personally use and install, and that's really encouraging considering the mess of applications that are available in, ro in most repositories. So it's not quite fully baked yet, but I love where this is going. In many ways, that's how I feel about the Fedora releases as a whole. Uh, for many years, I've, I've avoided using Fedora simply because it's been too unstable and it hasn't really given me any great benefit or incentive to use it. But if they can continue to provide a bleeding edge system with all the latest tools and tricks under the hood and a solid base for somebody to build a good desktop experience out of, then I wouldn't have any problem running it, especially if Fedora is going to continue to create a vanilla platform for the different desktop teams, be they GNOME or KDE, to provide what they envision their desktop to be, then I think it's more power to the GNOME project or the KDE project in that the end user will be able to enjoy the desktop the way that the desktop designers and engineers envisioned it. So if you'd like to enjoy a really up-to-date desktop environment on a semi-stable base, then definitely check out Fedora 20. It's got some interesting stuff to offer on the desktop side, and also as a developer and as a system administrator, you've got quite a few tools to work with there that will eventually trickle down into Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So thank you all for watching once again, and welcome to 2014. There's going to be lots of cool stuff coming your way. Definitely feel free to hit the like button if it did indeed help you out. And hit subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis. And I shall see you all in the very near future as we kick off a new year in Linux, Android and tech.